Hello, I'm Uso Kim from KAIST. Today, I will be presenting my rate-breaking work, I Can't Talk Now, speaking with voice of communication aid using text-to-speech synthesis during multi-party video conference. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has expanded the needs for video conferencing, and the number of new users has dramatically increased. However, where are the new users participating in video conference? In our preliminary study, we found that users are participating in various spaces. Some respondents of our survey answered that they had experience participating in video conference in public spaces, even on public transport. And we found that people are sometimes psychologically constrained by environmental factors. For example, users are unwilling to turn on the microphone and speak out loud in where it's too noisy or where other people are there. And some respondents replied that they had experience of not saying what they wanted to say because of environmental factors. And it is not easy to communicate with text chat while others are talking by voice. We thought this is a significant problem. So to solve it, we thought about delivering speech through sound without making a sound. Actually, this is not a new idea. There are already many studies for disabled people, such as augmentative and alternative communication, voice output communication aid, and speech, generate, speech generating device. So we regarded users who felt afraid to speak out due to surrounding factors as temporarily disabled people. To check whether VOCA could help those users, we developed a single technology proof using text-to-speech synthesis. And we conducted user tests to observe its feasibility. We designated one of the four participants per team as PX and controlled PX's condition in three conferences as follows. First conference, PX was located in public space in which it was undesirable to speak out loud. Second, in the same space as the first conference and VOCA was available. And third, VOCA was available and PX could speak freely in a private room. As a result of the user study, PXs cannot participate well when they use text chat. And at the second conferences, our VOCA solved the most of the problems with text chat. The result of the participants' peer evaluation showed that second conference supported a more equitable participation than the first conference. At the last conference, we also found that an additional potential of VOCA that users may use this for special purposes. Based on this, we determined that it is worth evolving VOCA for video conferencing. So we propose the following five future agendas based on the issues we found. First, adjustable speech rate. VOCA should be able to speak at the similar speech rate as other attendees. Second, adjustable tone and nuance to suit the various purpose of speech. Third, signal user input status and beginning and ending of utterances. And first, copy situations of voice overlap. In order not to interfere with other people's sound taking, VOCA should provide speech cues and prepare means to cope with voice overlap. The last, feeling of a human. We can investigate the usability of VOCA with a speech synthesizer trained with user's vocal timbre or annotation. So to summarize, we found that users' participation in video conferencing can be affected by external environmental conditions, and found that VOCA can help users who face temporary speaking constraints. AAC or VOCA is not just for people with disabilities. If more AAC studies target both the disabled and the able-bodied, communication barriers will become more blurred. In that sense, we hope that this study contributes to broadening the scope of AAC research.